get a clap because I thought All right, awesome. Show of hands, who is a junior or a family member of? Okay, awesome. Just curious. Thank you. All right, well, welcome. Thank you for coming tonight. I want to start off by saying to all of you who are starting this process, you're doing exactly what you need to do. You're getting ahead of the game, getting information now. So kudos to you. Um, as Nick said, I'm Chris Richards. I'm Director of Undergraduate Enrollment Management at the University of Maine. Uh, question, who here has been to our campus for a tour? All right, excellent, excellent. I would say, and I'm sure my, my colleagues here from the other institutions will echo, every school on your radar, make sure you visit, check it out, and get a feel for it. Um, up at the University of Maine, just some quick facts before what we do for admission. We are the largest university in the state. We're the only Division I institution from an athletic standpoint. We have about 10,000 undergraduates and 2,500 graduate students at the school. Um, we have just under 100 majors at the undergraduate level and over 100 masters and doctoral programs. Um, our institution is actually split up into multiple colleges, um, which really is just groups of majors, natural sciences, forestry and agriculture, the business school, liberal arts and sciences, uh, College of Education, Human Development, um, and obviously engineering. Um, and students can be in any program, they double major, do whatever. We really are, encourage our students to get involved um, in multiple academic disciplines. It's very common to see students at UMaine who are a mechanical engineer, but they have a minor in theater. Um, and we really like to see students who are involved in those kinds of things. We have 200 clubs and organizations on our campus. So if you are bored at UMaine, uh, that really is the student's fault. We have everything from um, clubs related to your academic field. We have a men's and women's competitive lumberjack team, um, which is a pretty incredible thing to watch. We have a cheese club, and they like make cheese and eat cheese, and that's their thing, whatever. Um, so they're definitely something for you. Um, but a big component about the university um, that plays into some of our um, admission criteria is we are a major research-based institution and every student at the University of Maine will have a research component as a part of their undergraduate work. We actually get $100 million a year in research grant funding. It's a very fundamental part of our identity, discovery, new products, commercialization of those things, and particularly in service to the state of Maine, but also across the country and the globe. Um, students at UMaine have the option for over 700 options for study abroad, um, so we really, it can be a launch pad for the rest of the world. So obviously a lot of you have seen it, been on campus, um, but if you haven't, make sure you come up and check us out. At the University of Maine, our application process, we have three forms of applying. Uh, the Common App, which is the most common, uh, kind of cliche thing. We have the University of Maine System application, which can be used. Uh, that allows you to apply to any of the UMaine system schools, us, University of Southern Maine, Fort Kent, etc. And we also have a mobile app that you can, if that's how you want to apply, then, then feel free. We have no application fees at the University of Maine. We have eliminated them from our process entirely. So please do not worry about that. At UMaine, we have an early action deadline of December 1st. That is a non-binding deadline. However, it is strongly encouraged uh, for all of our students, but particularly selective programs. Anyone here interested in nursing or engineering, potentially? Okay, yeah, a few of you. You really want to apply to UMaine by December 1, uh, because a lot of those programs may reach capacity, and we may close them down, okay? After December 1st, we have a suggested rolling admission deadline of March 1st. If you're applying after that, you're probably in a tough spot in terms of getting your FAFSA submitted, getting your financial aid and all those types of things. In terms of academics, I'm gonna talk general terms and then some more specifics. We require four years of English. We need a minimum two years of lab science looking for bio and chem. We need math to the minimum algebra two level. That is to get in just to the university in some form, okay? If you're looking at engineering, you're gonna have to have physics on your transcript. You're gonna have to be a minimum pre-calculus in mathematics. If you're looking at business, 
we're looking for a minimum pre-calc in math as well. So if some of you are signing up and you're thinking, do I want stats, do I want pre-calc or that type of thing, at UMaine, we prefer pre-calc over statistics for business. And that may not make sense to some of you, but that's how they want it. Um, our average GPA for our class right now on campus is a 3.48 on a 4.0 scale. Um, and we have about 1170 SAT to give you an idea. So that's the average, all right? Now certainly half are above that and half are below. Um, but particularly for certain majors, um, if you're looking at anything in the sciences, you really need 1080 minimums. But if you want nursing, you need an 1120. If you're looking at engineering, you're gonna need an 1170 minimum on the SAT, okay? Um, and also, you're gonna need 500s or above in math. So make sure, we are a test required school and our institution does put pretty significant weight on them. So some of you, you're probably getting ready to take these pretty soon. I strongly advise taking them a second time at the University of Maine, we do super score. And if you look at our website, you can go right now in terms of scholarships, I'm sure everyone, particularly mom and dad, are interested in the money aspect of how much this costs. Um, for an in-state student, the University of Maine's total cost, room and board, meal plan, tuition and fees is about $22,000 a year. Um, but we offer student scholarships for Maine residents that start at $1,000 a year and go all the way up to, and sometimes beyond, full tuition and fees. And academic performance really will dictate where you fall out on that. So make sure you take advantage of your academic resources at your school, study hard, take the SATs multiple times. It will put you in the best position to get the maximum financial opportunities at the University of Maine. Um, I would encourage you, if you haven't visited again, come on up. We give tours three times a day, Monday through Friday. We give them one tour every Saturday, all year long, including in the summer. Um, and I do have information in the back, and I'd love to touch base with anyone about setting up a visit if that's what you're looking to do. So thank you very much. That's all I have. Good show of hands. It's right down the street. Um, essentially, it's about an hour away down in Castine, right on the coast. Um, some of what I'm going to say echoes University of Maine, but some of it's a little different. Um, we are a small school. We are part of the University of, or our state school. We're not part of the University of Maine system. Um, we are our own branch, our own school. We're actually one of the seven maritime colleges in the United States. So what does that mean? That means that we are very unique. We have a maritime thread throughout our, all of our programs. We started in the 1940s as an effort uh, during the Second World War to get people trained to go and work out at sea. What does working out at sea even mean? It means to be deck officers, captains, mates, um, people that operate a vessel from the smallest size boat to the largest ships you can ever imagine crossing the world's oceans, whether it's cruise ships to container ships to tankers and barges and tugboats. Um, we can name them all, um, but we don't have time tonight. Um, but we also train people to work in the engineering department of those ships. That's how the school started. We have grown immensely since then. We have a couple of different umbrellas of majors that we offer. And under each umbrella, we kind of break it down into specific majors, which if you have more questions, I can answer later on. We don't need to go into every one of our majors. But being a small school, we don't have 100 different majors. We have a couple of specialized majors. So one of our uh, umbrellas is our transportation department, and that is students that want to see themselves going to work out at sea, being the role of the captain or the mate um, on some of these largest ships. Then we have the un uh, engineering umbrella, as I had mentioned, going to work maybe as an engineer aboard the ships, but we have many different engineering programs. So whether that's being a power engineer and going on the power side, going to pursue higher education, master's and PhD level in your engineering, it's a very hands-on program. We have an ocean studies and a marine biology program, and we've actually just added a new major this, uh, for this fall, um, and it's in a marine, coastal and marine environmental science major. Um, so that's really exciting. But under our ocean studies program, 
Um, our students have the ability to be out on the water doing their research with state-of-the-art laboratories, a research vessel that's docked 50 feet away from their classroom. It's really amazing. And then we have a whole business program. And our business program is a lot like uh, maybe the University of Maine's business program, but we specialize in the logistics and um, the commercial aspect of how to get things from point A to point B. So you're coming away with not only your business degree, but your logistics component, which is very powerful. And in that business program, we also offer a master's. So it can be a really powerful degree. Any student at our school, and a lot of people take advantage of this, will be able to minor in that business program and be able to go on and pursue that master's. So not only do you have that college education, you have the leadership skills, the engineering degree, the transportation degree, but also this business degree. So you can go and the world is, your, the world is open at that point. You can go start your own business or run with it wherever you want. Um, so if any of that sounds really interesting, what we're looking for on the admissions side, um, being juniors, this is a great time to start thinking about it. We are on only on the common application. So um, as you heard, in the University of Maine, they have several different streams to apply. We have just the one different, the one stream through the common app. You go onto the website, you fill it all in, you select Maine Maritime Academy as one of the schools you want to apply. We will populate in a couple of different additional essay questions. We want you to take the time to thoroughly think about those questions. Those questions are really, why do you want to apply to a school like us? Because we are so unique, we're looking for students that want to be there. We're not gonna, it's not a school for everybody. We certainly understand that, but we want to find the right students and the right person that wants to be on that campus. The other maritime colleges are scattered about the United States, um, and so to have this one in your backyard is really incredible. Um, in the application process, we're looking for four years of English, but it's hard to graduate high school without. Uh, definitely four years of high school math, and we absolutely need trigonometry or pre-calc, and if you're looking for one of the engineering programs, definitely pre-calc or calculus, if you can get into that by your senior year. Um, preferred two years of foreign language, although we're not a foreign language heavy school, you do have the opportunity to take foreign languages and you're going to be traveling all over the world. So to come in with that in your back pocket is highly preferred. It's not a requirement. And um, we look for two out of the three lab sciences, especially if you're looking in the engineering department. We want to see that physics. Uh, but there's biology, chemistry, and physics. If you can get all three of them in before you graduate, that's the icing on the cake, but not every student has that opportunity. Um, but we definitely want to see physics for an engineering, but um, biology, chemistry, and physics are the ones that we're looking for. When you apply, we do require your SATs, we require the application, we require your high school transcript and a letter of recommendation. We don't have a drop dead score that we're looking for for your SATs or your GPA. Our average income in class is about 545 in each subject in the SATs. So obviously there's students that are lower, students that are higher. What we're looking for is an overall picture of how you're going to be as a student. Leadership skills, positions that you've taken in high school that are outside of the classroom, who you are as a person are just as important on your application as some of the other details including your SAT scores. So if you are working a part-time job through high school, if you're an Eagle Scout, if you're the president of a club, or if you're the captain of a sports team, we want to know all of that, because some of that stuff is just as important. By the end of your four years at Maine Maritime Academy, we're creating a student body of leaders, and if you're coming in with that knowledge base and that mindset, you're going to be a great success at our school. Um, our student body is about a thousand, just less than a thousand, and so we are a small school. We don't have a hundred different clubs, 500 different sports, um, but the ones that we do have are incredibly powerful and it fluctuates all the time. So depending on what the student body is interested, it really depends on what clubs and um, extracurricular sports are offered. We are a division three sport, so you will have the ability to play on a varsity level if you have that interest. Um, men's and women's, we're adding sports all the time. We've just added 
competitive wrestling. Um, we've recently added swimming. They've now competed two seasons. Um, and then I can uh, continue the list if you had interest later on. But it is certainly a a place to think about being right down the road, you're coming away with an absolutely incredible degree with a job placement rate that far exceeds many colleges and a salary mark that is unbelievable for many of our students. So whether or not you're thinking of the Ocean Studies program, the transportation program, or the engineering program, the world is open to you, um, including the business program upon graduation. So, thank you. <laughs> I'm one of the senior associate deans of admission at Bates College in Lewiston, Maine. So about an hour and 45 minutes down the highway um, to the booming metropolis of Lewiston. Um, I most often recruit uh, where people have never heard of Lewiston and don't really have the context of Maine. Knowing that Lewiston is a big city is surprising to a lot of the families I talk with, but you guys know what I'm talking about, Lewiston being the second largest city in Maine. Um, Bates is a classic small liberal arts college. We have about 2,000 students on campus. It's entirely undergraduate, so the focus is on the residential undergraduate experience. Classes are really small. The average class size is somewhere between 16 and 18. There's a 10 to 1 student to faculty ratio, so a lot of opportunity to get to know your professors, for them to get to know you, for you to grow as a student. And the classic liberal arts tradition, you will do a lot of different things um, throughout the course of your four years academically and build a nice broad set of skills that enable you to navigate a lot of options after graduation. So we don't have pre-professional programs per se, but we do have tracks for pre-med, pre-law, pre-vet, et cetera. So if that's of interest to you, you can get a liberal arts degree and still be pre-med. You can major in English and pre be pre-med at Bates. We have um, over 80% acceptance rate to med school, and this year 90-something acceptance rate to law school after graduation. So it does prime you well to have options after graduation. Um, academically, you might come in with that idea, but most of our students are really open to what comes um, throughout the course of that first year, especially on campus, and you don't declare your major to the end of sophomore year. So if you're a student that thinks, I'm really interested in some of the things I've studied in high school, but I've actually never taken sociology, I'm really interested in environmental studies, I've never taken a class in that, I can't quite decide what I'm going to major in because I haven't explored enough. Liberal arts is a really good option for that, and Bates in particular is a good place to, for that sort of exploration. We have over 100 different clubs um, and activities that are student run on campus. We have 32 varsity sports. For the most part, we compete Division Three in the NESCAC, so the New England Small College Athletic Conference. So while it is D3, it is one of the most competitive conferences in the country. Typically, our students are performing at the national level, even though it is a D3 commitment. So a nice balance there if you are a prospective student athlete. Um, a few things to think about as, as you navigate the application process when it comes to Bates. Um, we do take the Common application, so the Common app didn't exist when we were applying to college, really. Like, so this is awesome that you guys have this at your fingertips, access to over 400 different colleges and universities through one platform. It's amazing. We also take the Coalition, which is another, um, another form, another format of the application, which is probably beyond what you need to consider right now, but there are two ways to apply to a base. Most people apply through the Common application. We practice what is called holistic review, so we look at a lot of different factors. Certainly your transcript is the cornerstone of our evaluation. It will be any school that you're looking at, the transcript. What you do day in and day out is really what matters in terms of our evaluation of you as a prospective student. But all the other things factor in as well. So what your teachers say about you in the classroom, we ask for two teacher recommendations. What your counselor says about you as a community member and kind of your life as a student in this community um, is, is part of our evaluation. The things you do outside of the classroom as you list them in your common application become a part of our evaluation of your contributions to our community. Testing for Bates is entirely optional. So I'll say that again. Testing at Bates is entirely optional. <laughs> Over um, 30 years, Bates has been test optional. So the SAT or ACT is not required in our process, and we've been doing research for 30 years that actually proves there's no correlation between how well you do on the SAT and how well you will do at Bates. So hopefully that is comforting, um, and I encourage you to take Christopher's advice and take the SATs the spring. If you can, take them again in the fall. You'll do better the second time. Use Khan Academy to improve those scores. It'll open up more doors for you when it comes time to select your colleges. But when it comes to Bates, you can include those test scores or not. It is 
entirely up to you. So if it's there, we will evaluate it as something you're saying, this is something that I am proud of and want to put into my application, and if it's not there, we won't. So about half of these students submitted testing as part of their application, and about half did not. So something to, to think about. There is an opportunity to interview, uh, which other schools you look at might, might offer. Um, it's not required, but highly encouraged in our process. Again, it's a small community. We are looking for about 500 students every year, and we want to get to know you. It's kind of the antithesis of a standardized test, is sitting with a person and actually having a conversation. And those interviews are an opportunity for you to say, you know, I, I had this blip in, in freshman year. I was transferring from another school, and I want to talk about that. Or my math curriculum didn't line up with you know what I came into maps with, and I, can we talk about that a little bit? Or I do this really cool thing that's not showing up in my application, and we'll dive into that a bit. So take advantage of the opportunity to interview, and that will be a part of your evaluation as well. Um, this year we'll have will be under 20% acceptance rate um, to date, so it's highly selective. Um, so it's it's hard to get into. Um, that said, we're looking for folks who are going to fit well academically and enjoy again, the flexibility and freedom in the curriculum and also contribute to our student body in a number of different ways. There's no perfect student for base. We look for lots of different types of students, and I think a lot of different types of students can do well at our college. Um, the representation from Maine is, is also important to note. Um, we have about 10% of our student body coming from the state of Maine, so while you'll, you would stay in state to go to Bates, um, most of the students that you would live with and learn with are from um, outside of the state. Most of them are from outside of New England, so it's really a global community that we recruit to Bates, and over 80 different countries represented. Um, finally, the cost is probably um, the thing that is um, worth talking about, especially early in the process. Um, is looking at what schools cost and kind of sticker price, but also the actual cost to you. So every school and college, every college and university that you're going to look at um, has a net price calculator or um, an estimator on their website. It's federally mandated. So this is research that you guys can do in advance. Families, this may be a great opportunity for you to kind of take hold of this particular part of the process and do that research in advance and actually look at each school that your student is considering, what would it actually cost? So based on family income, assets, et cetera, potentially if, if the school offers merit scholarship, SAT scores, GPA, and figure out roughly what would this cost us. Um, typically for Maine folks, the actual sticker price and the, what you actually pay can be very, very different, particularly for Bates, where our um, tuition and room board, the comprehensive fee right now is over $70,000, which, yes, yes. Um, but Bates needs full financial aid financial need for all families regardless of citizenship. So that means that for families who qualify for financial aid, our grant for any, any incoming student um, in the last couple of years has been over $42,000, so money you don't have to pay back. The average graduating debt for Bates seniors is somewhere between twelve dollars and $15,000, where the national average is closer to $30,000. So it's a big expensive sticker price, but financial aid is generous and we meet full needs. So depending on your family circumstances, the actual cost could be very different. For my family in particular, it was um, cheaper for me to go to Bates than it was to my state school. Um, so I'm not saying that that's definitely what it will be for you, but it's doing the research in advance that takes the shock away from the sticker price that I think allows you to consider more options than you might on face value. I have plenty more to say, but I think that's probably enough for you to absorb right now. Um, but again, we have the opportunity to answer questions, particularly for our schools after this, and my card is in the back if you want to follow up as well. Thank you. So before I open it up to questions, just I want to take a moment and explain to parents, guardians here tonight a little bit about how we handle the process um, as a counseling department here. So when we returned from February break, Mrs. Walsh and I went into all the junior English classrooms, and there's actually the same handout all the juniors got is also on the back table there, so it's available to parents. It's a very I don't want to say brief summary, but it is an informative summary. Um, and you can kind of see in this process, especially at this stage, there's a feeling of over, over uh, load of information. There's just a lot to it. But I can assure you that if it's broken down and done um, gradually, it's not very, it's very manageable. Um, especially if you go into it with the idea of planning ahead. So, after those classroom meetings, Mrs. Walsh and I have started doing individual meetings with all of our juniors. And so we do that usually during a study hall period. 
So it's uh, an informative, quick meeting where we talk about what their current grade point average is, um, the upcoming SAT. We can kind of, we do our best, I should say, to look at their PSAT in October, last October, and try to estimate what we think their SAT will be. And we also talk a little bit about what courses they should be registering for and um, just making sure they don't have too much time on their hands in their senior year. Yeah, I'm looking in that direction. So, um, so then when we come back in the fall, we go back into English classrooms again. We talk about the application. Um, our senior English class, classes here are very good about integrating this process into their instruction. They get the actual common application essay prompts, and that's usually the senior summer assignment for senior English classes. So they get some feedback on it, um, and they get a little bit of guidance in terms of what they should be writing, so they're not just left to their own devices. They also get some help uh, devising a resume um, if they have not already. And we have individual meetings again in the fall. At this point, we look at applications, we look at um, other things, we look at testing, and of course, it's not limited to that. If any of you have questions, please reach out to us, please email us. Our uh, business cards are in the back, but of course, um, our emails are very easy, first initial, last name, at johnbaps.org. And so, um, at this point, I mean, we've heard some general um, information about each school that's here, but certainly a big part of this is we do want to have open it up to all of you for questions, because I'm sure a lot of you have the same questions. But before we get into that, I just also want to say Next Wednesday, we're having our junior financial aid night here. So any questions pertaining to your financial aid and scholarships and things like that, I'm sure will be more accurately answered next week. Um, unless you guys have money to hand out tonight. I, don't know if you did. I, don't, I didn't bring any with me. Uh, <laughs> all right. Okay, so at this time, um, I'm gonna open it up to questions. Uh, please don't be shy. Please feel free to ask whatever you'd like of our, any member of our panel. Yes, over here. Okay, the question is the average cost at MMA. Do you want, do you want me to just hand this over to the table? Uh, probably that's easier. easier. Yeah. It's probably easier, okay. We often um, don't speak of the cost because it's so student specific. Um, we are state schools, so we do offer in-state tuition, and we do have financial aid and lots of scholarships, um, but it depends on what you major in. It depends on where you're from. Um, so the range would be, I would say, with everything included, um, probably 20 to 40,000, depending on where you're from, what you're majoring in, whether you're in one of our programs that requires you to be in the regiment, whether you're in one of our programs that requires you to go out on a cruise. Um, so it's not an easy answer. It's not a, here you are, here's your price tag. Um, it takes a lot of calculations. What I will say, which I, I didn't get to earlier, um, the way some of our merit-based scholarships work is if you qualify for that scholarship and you apply in that early action deadline, which is before December 1st, you're put in the pool to be selected. You don't apply separately for that scholarship, so if you qualify with your grade point average and your SAT scores, then most likely you will be offered a scholarship. We don't have a binding early action deadline or early action decision, so you can apply, get in, get that scholarship, and then sit on it and let us know when you've kind of absorbed all that information, you, you're not bound to having to come to us if you apply in September, October, November. We certainly encourage you to apply. If you think that you might qualify for a scholarship, apply, 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 because all you're gonna do is potentially get that scholarship, 
and then uh, may or may not use it. So. Any other questions? Yes. What are MMA's options in regard to working out of port? Okay. Working what? Out of the port. Out of the port? Yeah. Which port? This port? Oh, after graduation? So our students, um, the question was, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, what are the, our students' options for working shore-based versus sea-based after graduation, more or less? Um, our students will go all over the place. They're certainly not bound to going out to sea. They have that license and they can keep that door open, but that's certainly not where all of our students are going to end up. So some students will have that license in hand, they'll go work out at sea for a little bit, and then say, you know what, I really don't want to go do that for the rest of my life, and they'll take a shore-based job. Um, especially students in that business department um, can go and work on the logistical side um, in that port logistics, but the students in the engineering side can do the same thing. I, honestly, the world is open. Um, you have the knowledge and the know-how and the license and the degree to go and work shore side or seaside, which is really incredible. Not many schools can say the whole world is open to them upon graduation, even in the middle of the ocean. So uh, those are the students in the licensing program. So in our certain engineering programs and our deck programs that will have that license to go work out at sea, but they will also have the ability to go work shore based anywhere they want. I think, I hope that answers it. Yes. No, I didn't hear. What's your GPA and SAT requirements for scholarships? What is the GPA and SAT requirements for scholarships at Maine Maritime? Okay. For MMA. Um, we have different breakdowns, and so there's different scholarship levels for the different SATs um, and grade point averages, and it's all online. Um, so instead of telling you it, right now, you know, we've got a $2,500 scholarship, a $6,000 scholarship, and a $10,000 scholarship. So of course, the higher grade point average and the higher SAT score, the higher dollar amount you would be able to receive. And so all of that's listed out um, under our scholarship tab on the website, um, exactly what grade point average and what SAT score you should really be aiming for for the highest dollar amount. So. Any other questions? I'll look to this side. Questions? I want to give a suggestion. Please. One thing I want to just make everyone aware of, anyone here getting college marketing material in the mail yet? So much, right? And you probably got a basket somewhere, maybe on the corner of the kitchen table, and it might be important, so we're keeping it, but we aren't reading it, so we're just stacking it up. And that's all well and good. Once you apply to an institution and you have a pending application there, make sure you read your mail in detail, please, okay? Um, particularly your acceptance letter and your financial aid package. Um, and a great point made earlier about your total price, make sure your price and how much is it actually going to cost is so important and also read the details about any scholarships you're offered, okay? I'm gonna give you some nitty gritty information. Everything we send to you, any college, is a marketing opportunity. It's a chance to make an impression. And many colleges will list things a certain way that make them exciting. And if you actually just step back for a second and really read it, you may find the institution that you feel is giving you the best deal isn't. Um, I get an appeal today from a Maine parent who was absolutely disgusted with the University of Maine because we were not in any way um, committed to Maine students was, was the thought. 
and this person was offered a $32,000 scholarship to go to an institution, and that's, that's wonderful, but we were only giving this student six. Um, well, come to find out, that school had listed $32,000 in the acceptance letter over four years. So you gotta divide it by four. So there's your yearly amount. And this school also costed $58,000 a year, and ours is 22. So you can see we were thousands per year less, but that impression given in that, how that was written, really had this family confused. Um, so make sure you read everything completely. Um, because your acceptance letter may have key information that if you just get excited, that's awesome, you pin it on the fridge, you don't worry about it, and you might really need to know. Um, so read your mail, it, it doesn't matter. Can I add to that? You may. Put a valid email address on your application, <laughs> especially if you've applied somewhere and check that email address often. Um, the way that, I'm gonna speak for the American Academy, but not for the three of us necessarily. Our acceptances, you will get notified in your email that something has changed in your application file. We're not gonna tell you what it is. You have to go and log in to find out. You will also get it in the mail. There's a lot of people that don't check their email and you know whatever address that they've given us may or may not get to them. So please check that email address. If you're putting a school email address, that's fine. Hopefully you're checking it and start creating that login and that portal. Um, and for us in particular, you can track your application all the way down so you can see what's what we have and what we're missing. If you thought maybe you submitted your SAT scores or your transcript, but we don't have it yet, check on that, check in on that. We're checking often, but if you can check on your own accord, it goes a long way for our own knowledge that you're very serious. So So you got us in March. We're a little a little marchy over here. Like, don't do this. We gotta do that. Um, clearly there's a lot of emotion in this process and a lot of logistics. So my advice to families, particularly if you're going through this the first time, um, is to talk about how you're going to manage the process and do it now as opposed to six months from now or eight months from now when the stakes are higher and who's opening the mail and who actually read that letter and who did the math and why didn't you do it and that was my job. And, don't get to that point. Establish some rules and boundaries now. Uh, if it's up to the student to figure out where we're going for spring break and which schools we're going to see and schedule the tour, just have that conversation. Who's keeping the spreadsheet? Who's nagging about writing the essay? Who's registering for SATs? So as a family, start to navigate that conversation. As a young adult, this is a really great opportunity to start to shape your relationship with your parents as an emerging adult and say, actually, this is really important to me or really, I need your help here. This is the first time as a family you'll talk about money in a real way, and that can be really eye-opening for your students and really uncomfortable for the parents. So again, think about how you're gonna navigate this conversation as a family throughout the next year, 18 months, and set some ground rules, set, establish you know, when and where and how these conversations are gonna happen so it's not a constant dinner table conversation and everyone has a clearly defined role. And uh, one of the things we do in that meeting, um, Chris had mentioned what the University of Maine looks for on a 4.0 scale. On our transcript, we have a 100 point scale. So in our junior meeting, we actually translate that for you so you know where you stand on that scale as well. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention, you heard a lot of mention of the common application. Now, I'd say probably 90, 95% of all the colleges seniors apply to most years will accept the common application. So I would strongly suggest using that as your primary way to submit applications. Now I know um, no extra essays, do you have an extra essay? No extra essays? We have an extra essay. You do? Yeah. Okay, so they do have an essay. Uh, so that's one thing, they don't, in the senior English classes, they're not going to cover those extra essays because they're so specific to that school. 
Um, on the Common App, actually, I came across a really interesting essay prompt from, I think it was the University of Chicago this year. They wanted students to write an essay of a historical character, or actually write an obituary of a historical character and how they would have lived in today's world. So it was uh, quite interesting. I had seen a couple of sample essays for that, pretty imaginative, lets kids think on their feet a little bit. Um, and yeah, oh, one other thing about the Common App. So we do introduce to all our, our juniors, uh, or reintroduce, I should say, Naviance. It's something we introduce to them as freshmen, but they will be using it a lot in the years, in the uh, months to come. It's a good resource for researching careers. It gives you U.S. Department of Labor data on different professions out there, uh, their salaries and so on, but also tells you what you can study for that profession. You can also research different colleges and universities um, in the U.S. and Canada. I think they even have the U.S. territories on there, anyone wanting to go to Guam for college or American Samoa, you can even find that there too. Um, so that's a resource for you. What we typically suggest is between now and when you return in the fall, it's a good idea to tabulate a list of colleges that you would like to consider applying to. So in the meantime, it's a great idea to go and tour some of these colleges if you have the opportunity. We realize, especially with out-of-state schools, it's difficult, but we do have a lot of students who will go on a lot of tours uh, over April vacation. It is ideal if you can go and do tours when school's in session so you can get a sense of what student life is like. Um, if you go, if you can only go in the summer, I mean, you do what you can, but it's not really that same feel because it's not in session. But it is a good idea to um, sit in on classes. It's a good idea to speak to professors about what they teach and their major and so on and so forth. Um, just because the reality is, even though I feel like we have a lot of very good learning opportunities here, we don't have the same learning opportunities that a university does or a liberal arts college. So it's a good idea to know what's out there. Um, I have many, I've had many conversations, and maybe Mrs. Walsh has too, in the last couple of weeks. We've talked to many juniors already, and they say, I want to major in engineering. Well, what type of engineer? I don't know yet. So, so that's where visiting colleges would be helpful because you can ask those questions. You can see what they have for facilities and go from there. Um, so at any rate, that was just something to add there. Um, can I yes, tag on to that? Absolutely. I'm gonna just tag on to that idea of visiting colleges. Go and visit as many as you can try. Just in the state of Maine, you can visit a liberal arts college, you can visit a small state school, you can visit a large state school. If you have in your head that you really want to go to a liberal arts college or you want to go to a large state school or you want to go to a small one, visit the opposite. Visit the complete opposite. So at least it solidifies in your head what type of school you really want to go to. Drive through these campuses if you're on vacation and you can take a little detour on the road. Uh, if you don't get the chance to actually go and talk to somebody, being on campus and walking around and shadowing a student or even doing it overnight, that can be set up through admissions. It's really the most advantageous way of figuring out if you like the school. Um, but just go and explore. If you are already as a junior set on what kind of school you want to go to, just keep that mind open because you might be surprised. Uh, you might be walking through a school and be like, you know what, that was really cool. Uh, or you might get there in a school that you've always wanted to go to and you're like, Ooh, no, that's not for me. Um, which happened to myself when I was in that process. So it's really important to just go check it all out. And this is our job, is to help facilitate these visits and this exploration, so don't hesitate to pick up the phone and call the admissions office and say, we've never done this before, we have three hours, what should we do? Or reach out to, we typically arrange our admission offices by geographic territory, so look and see who has the Bangor area, the school that you're looking at, or Maine, 
um, and reach out to that admission officer. Our job is to answer your questions, so feel free to just raise your hand and say, I need a little help navigating this, which I know for Mainers is hard to do, but this is what we get paid to do, so don't hesitate to ask for help. If you have specific interests or you want to meet certain people on campus or you just want to sit down and talk about this financial aid thing with somebody, just reach out and ask us for help. So that reminded me of something. So on Naviance, there is a feature, uh, and this is more common in the fall. In the fall, a lot of these people, college admissions people from all over the Northeast, some even further away, come to John Babs to visit students who may be interested in their school. So they sign up through, uh, and they actually sign up for their visits through Naviance, so you can see when they're coming. So what happens is we usually get um, quite a few signups before school even starts, usually 20 to 30. And then they just continue usually between September and the Christmas break. So um, that's an opportunity for you as students to go and talk to these folks about their schools. It's usually a very uh, small conversation. Um, usually it's right in our office, at our table. Um, so, I know it seems intimidating, but as you can see, they're human beings, they don't bite, they're very easy to talk to, so it's a good idea to come in, ask some questions about the school, um, and um, you can sign up right on Navion. So the way that works is you will see the date and the time that they will be in our office, but then you will have to see what you have for a class set period. If you have a study hall, that's perfect, you can sign up, we'll, we'll know to expect you, but if you have a regular class at that time, it's up to the teacher of that class whether you can come or not uh, to the meeting. And if you can't, reach out to Mrs. Walsh or I, we'd be happy to get information for you, uh, but ultimately your teacher does have the final say as to whether you can come to the meeting or not. But I think a lot of times what I've seen these meetings uh, with admissions counselors, especially because it's a small group, they ask you about you, what you're interested in. It, I think I've seen it really sell a lot of kids on, that's a great school, I wanna go there. So they're very valuable conversations. Um, so please look to do that um, as we go forward. Now, just curious, do all of you have, are all of you in session during our vacation do you know I think it's uh, yeah. when is it guys you should know. it's the third week yes. of April yes, yes. Not. you were not Bates is not other two are um, so yes <laughs> it's a good opportunity to visit schools during that time it tends to be a time where some schools well most are in session um, any other questions before um, Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. the admission cycle, believe it or not, for a lot of schools still goes on through the end of July for the current senior class. So they can create the account, they can get started, but when we have those individual senior meetings with them and when we're in their English classes, we help them with that process. So will you guys So on the common application, they do ask, there is the optional question to put in your test scores. So this would be SAT scores, AP scores, ACT, um, SAT subject tests. You can self-report those on your common application. Now, for Bates, I believe, like because you don't look at test scores, that's optional. Is that correct? Will take self-reported or? Okay, they'll take self-report or official, but when they register for the SAT, 
that's usually a good time to go ahead and order score reports to the colleges you're applying to because we cannot send official score reports. Only uh, you and your son or daughter can because we cannot log into your college board accounts. That and um, the way it usually works is when you register, you get four free score reports. So we do suggest to students to use those when you register. Um, anything more than four score reports, each score report costs about $12 each. So um, as much as we like your children, um, we're, we don't have that kind of flexible income. So, um, so that's just, that's usually how that process goes, but we do discuss that. Um, unfortunately, given the nature of college board websites and accounts, it's very difficult for us to actually get in and do it. Well, the students actually here keep their email for a while. I'm not sure exactly when they shut it off, but a lot of, a lot of our graduates still have access to their John Baptist email. But a couple of things they mentioned is they give students a lot of times portal accounts for their individual schools where they see um, various information. And so usually in that process, they also get an email from that school. So that's another way that students are communicating with in that regard. Um, just one side note. So I see some potential student athletes in the room. Uh, any words of advice for potential student athletes at your respective schools? Um, so again, Bates is Division Three, but there is pretty significant recruitment process, even though it is Division Three. There's no commitment, there's no kind of clearinghouse business, which we'll talk about at the end of this conversation. But for students who are interested in playing um, sports at Bates, I would encourage you to reach out to coaches in advance. Um, we have, for each sport, a uh, recruiting form online. You can get on a coach's radar um, and be in contact with them. And they let us know who's, who they're excited about, so it can become a factor when we look at your application and potential contribution to our school. I would say exactly the same thing as Bates um, at Maine Maritime Academy. So get in touch with a coach if you're interested in playing a varsity sport. Just by getting in touch with a coach does not mean you're committed to having to play that sport, but it'll give you a sense of what that coach is like and what being on the sports team is like, and you might be able to meet some other players um, to get a sense of who you'd be hanging out with every day. Um, so Division One Athletics is extremely, extremely competitive. Yes, you may not be a huge D1 school, uh, but it is exceptionally competitive. I would say for juniors, like if you're going to want to try to start pursuing that, like what can you do right now to chase that goal, the best way to begin those conversations is to have your coaching staff at your high school reaching out to the coaching staff at the University of Maine. Okay? The reason for that is uh, we have a lot of like blackout periods that we call them where coaches are actually not allowed to speak with potential recruits directly. Um, there are NCAA Division I regulations on that. Um, so if you're going to come up for an open house, for instance, and you're trying to set up um, a visit with a coach or speak with a coach, depending on the sport, make sure that it's not during one of those periods. And I can tell you that usually one of our fall open houses will fall on one of those. Um, so if you're going to make a visit, make sure it's not one of those times when you show up I'm here to speak with the swim coach, and we're like, actually you're not, uh, because you, you're not allowed to right now. Um, so that would be what I would say. Just start that conversation now. Your coach is reaching out on your behalf, um, and then get the ball rolling from there. If they're looking for contact information, do not go to the umain.edu website. Athletics has their own website, goblackbears.com. Um, and all the coach contact information is right there to begin that process. So, thank you. Any questions? Okay.
Um, these folks are going to hang around a little while if you have any questions, and as will Mrs. Walsh and myself. Um, just another plug for next Wednesday, we will have our junior financial aid night. Uh, still in the same, same place, same time, same day of the week, actually. So uh, please feel free to join us for that evening as well. And in the meantime, we thank you all for coming, and hopefully we see you uh, next week. Good job, Mr. Rock. Thank <laughs> you.